Now, there's multiple different ways that you can start up the engines, um, but um, what I do is, well, and what's typical for European operations is to leave the APU off and we start with ground power. Um, the APU startup is quite simple, basically, um, you start up the APU from working left to right. Um, after you hit the power button, you need to wait until the start illuminates, the hit starts, and then wait a few, like a minute or so before you sit on the genera generator. Um, leave the bleed air off because you can't start the engine with the bleed air on. Um, and then uh, that's basically it. You can do a battery start, but that's not really recommended because um, it obviously drains the engine quite considerably. Now to start um, with ground power with um, GSX, obviously it's a bit of a bit of an art to it because you can't st you can't use GSX with the engine on. So what I do um, is prepare for push back and departure. So we we'll want uh, nose right, tail left, to taxi to zero nine. So basically, yeah, you, you allow um, GSX to set up and then uh, you start the engine whilst uh, before you release the parking brake and that doesn't muck up the, uh, the system. Okay, so this is the point to do it. So make sure the exits are all closed. So make sure the all doors are closed on the uh, middle flight panel. Should have done it probably a little bit earlier, but not to worry. Switch back to electrical system. Uh, and GSX will continue to do this, but just ignore it. So what you need to do is ensure that you've got the main bus tie on. And then switch to number two. And then hit that start button. And as soon as you start to see um, the prop RPM go up, what you do is just flick the condition lever to start. And, uh, and then it should start up nicely. And then just check that there's no abnormal start. So make sure the ITT indication um, starts to move, which obviously it is. Um, and make sure it doesn't go above 920, because that's what's counted as a hot start. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and it should uh, move as well it is and the oil pressure um, must go above uh, 44 psi which it is it's going into the green now and that's it that's uh, that's all good make sure that you've switched on the energy generators so it's it's generating power and then you can uh, turn off the um, external GPU because you've got enough uh, power from the engine number two and then you can get rid of the external power as well. Just wait for it to spear and then uh, GSX will uh, allow us to push back in a minute. Um, now, unfortunately there's a bit of a bug with GSX and uh, the Manchester Dash where you can't actually start um, the other engine whilst you're being pushed back. Um, again, I think it's to do with the fl external flight model. Um, so basically what you have to do is just wait until it's completed the pushback system and, uh, and then you can start it then. And actually what I should have done was just switch the uh, beacon to red before I started. So there you go, can't be perfect. <laughs> what that does is basically just warns the ground crew that you're about to start engines.
Another flyby in a BMI regional. ERJ145. And there's those Ryanair 737s. Well, actually, no, sorry, that's nice in there. Ryanair there. It's a 757 bullet slings. Really want to get the uh, 737 from PMDG. That's going to be right up there on my uh, next purchase for aircraft. Okay, so now that we're, uh, we're here, we can start uh, engine number one. Um, so again, just make sure the main bus tie's on, flick to number one, and then hit the start. Oops, not that one. Just swing around a little bit. And then, uh, again, keep an eye on, make sure that uh, the NH is starting to move, then bring the condition lever forward. And then just keep an eye on the, on the temperatures and the oil pressure, make sure uh, it's not an abnormal start. Okay, so that's engine number one stable. So make sure, obviously, we've switched off the external power. We did that before we started the engine. Radar we can set to standby now. Uh, fuel pumps we can switch on, which are these auxiliary pumps here. Uh, radar, we just make sure that we've got full travel. Uh, we can turn the ro the, uh, the nose steering on now, so we can actually uh, move along the ground. And then we can check the hydraulics. Um, that's done by just moving over to the hydraulic 3 isolation valve, move the cover, and then hold down, and it should come up um, to uh, in line with the others, number 1 and 2. And then you switch it on. It should be between 2,803. Set the flaps for takeoff. So obviously that was flaps five, and then we switch off the main bus tie, bring the condition levers all the way forward to the max, uh, select the auto feather, turn off this caution light, and then uh, we can switch the engine bleeds on, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll switch to normal. And then we can switch it off um, back to minimum once we're ready for takeoff. Switch on the taxi light. So we should have done that before we push back. Okay, so we can get taxiing. I'll uh, use a but before we do, make sure that your uh, control lock's on. Otherwise, you can uh, set the wrong power. Bring that forwards. Try and keep it. Try and keep the propeller in the ground range. It's quite easy to move out of that. Um, I tend to move out of it just to kind of get moving. But once you're moving, try and keep it in the ground range. Test the brakes. You're working fine. Uh, flick the takeoff warning. And there's no noise, so that's uh, we're in the correct configuration. And try and keep uh, around 20 knots of ground speed, and 10 for when you're turning. Uh, you can also switch on the yaw damper at this point, and uh, we'll make sure that the cabin's secure when we get a bit close.
I don't know why there's some, uh, what look like typhoons there. I don't think East Midlands has RAF aircraft, but I could be mistaken. Looking clear to go, so we'll uh, slow down to about 10 knots just for this turn. And then we can taxi down uh, perpendicular to the Six runway, past the big cargo uh, hub, which is just down the end here. We can speed up to uh, about 20 knots now, now that we're on a nice long straight. We can also make sure that we're set to end top at this point, which we are. There's 20, so we'll just slow down a little bit. But this is your uh, engine power control. Um, I don't tend to really, really change it from end top. Uh, end top seems to be pretty good. Um, I think it's basically when you're in really hot conditions or uh, special, like maybe when it's particularly wet or whatever, that you want to change it. But I, I personally just tend to leave it in end top. But um, as you can probably tell me, I'm missing little bits here and there off, um, so I mean, I'm trying to point them out when I miss them, but, but uh, the dash is a very, it's very much a handful to fly. So I'm kind of tempted by the FS2 Crew um, Adjusted Dash 8 package, where basically it adds a um, virtual co-pilot to your cockpit, a bit like um, in the Aerosoft Airbus with the virtual co-pilot in that, works in a very similar way, but it's voice activated, so you interact more dynamically with the, um, with the co-pilot but otherwise it's you know, really detailed, helps to reduce the workload and uh, an excellent product, which I'll be thinking about guessing. So here's the end of the runway, because um, that just carries on, the head just carries on to the, um, to the cargo centre. So we can start the um, before takeoff checklist, so we've already checked the brakes, uh, take a warning, we've sounded, but we'll just do it again, just because we're a little bit closer now. Yep, no warning. Instruments um, are looking good. Um, we'll switch leads to minimum now. Um, we'll just do a quick flight control test. It's fine. Oh, negative. We do need to stand. And then we can get uh, clearance once. Okay, like stop talking. Tower B one zero nine and five A on holding position. Runway zero nine B one zero nine or five A. Line up runway zero nine or lining up runway zero nine B one zero nine and five A. Right. So uh, we'll turn on the white anti collision lights. Uh, run, we'll put on the uh, runway lights in a minute. Turn off the control lock. Transponder will uh, set on. You hold down the base of the bus next to the transponder. Pito static we can turn on now. Turn on the PTO pump. And the other fuel pump, I don't know why it switched, us, it switched itself off. Uh, and then on the uh, autopilot, um, select the altitude, heading select, turn on the flight, primary flight, uh, the flight director by switching on the side button. That also does the go around. B E E one zero nine or five A one zero five zero at one two. Fly runway heading one airborne contact departure on one twenty one decimal eight runway zero nine or clear for takeoff good flight runway heading departure frequency one two one decimal eight runway zero nine and clear for takeoff B E E one zero nine and five A
and then uh, we can get going. So bring that speed throttle up. It's looking good, nice synchronous. V1 and a uh, nice slow roll and then just follow the flight director thousand so we'll turn the autopilot on switch it to nav and uh, IAS mode and then Hit the gear up. And then set the IS mode um, for, I don't know, 185. So check to uh, 9000. And then bring the flaps up. So, flaps zero, all the pilots on, bleeds are, um, are minimum, so we can switch it to normal now. Condition levers we can bring back to 900. And then the after, after takeoff checklist, which is landing gear up, flap zero, bleeds on, climb power set. So um, I tend to keep 185 until uh, uh, the speed on 185 until we've crossed 10,000, um, and then I um, change the speed to 210. I think in the in the checklist it does say just to, to keep it on 210, but I I, I prefer to climb a little bit faster. Departure control six one six with you on flight level one one zero six one six identified. And then we'll let, we've gone over um, transition altitude, so we'll switch to one zero one three. Uh, Pressurisation is looking good, and the altimeter to be set to standard. Uh, we can turn off the um, standby and PTU pumps now, and we can turn off the fuel pumps as well. Uh, it doesn't actually say to turn off the auto feather in the, in the checklist, but um, it tells you to turn it on later on, so I personally turn it off now. And uh, we're we're climbing on up, so because we've just hit 9,000, you need to manually take over the IAS. So just bring that power back. I'll just ask ATC to repeat themselves, just because I often do miss an altitude change. No, so yeah, we are clear to 9,000. So just maintain about 200 knots ish. So we get cleared up higher. Okay, so we've crossed 10,000 feet, so I'll bring that speed um, up to, to 10. And uh, you can set, um, at this point, the condition leave is to 850 for a quieter climb. A little bit quieter for the passengers. Um, but personally, I'll just leave it at 210 until we're in the cruise, and then I'll bring the condition leaves back. All right, so we've got the ice detected um, warning. So what you can do, if you get this warning, is um, switch the airframe mode onto fast, turn on the prop heat, engine intakes open, rest speeds to increase, uh, and then uh, windshield heats on as well. Nope, not the wipers. Don't want them on. 
But uh, if, you, if, you, if you notice, um, there's a bit of ice on the windshield. Just park the uh, windshield. Just... That should clear. Clear to land, runway zero, Otherwise, we can enjoy some outside shots until I get up into the cruise.